Good morning. It's Thursday, October 3rd. I'm Jasmine Anderson. It's back to court today for the former Bayshore teacher accused of sexual abuse. Thomas Renegozzi has pleaded not guilty to sexually abusing two former students. As Newsday has reported, more than 50 victims have come forward to accuse the former Bayshore Elementary School teacher of sexual abuse over several decades. Now, if convicted, he faces up to 70 years in prison. The Marine veteran from Long Island accused of putting a man in deadly chokehold on the subway is back in court today for a pretrial hearing. West Islip's Daniel Penny is charged with manslaughter and criminally negligent homicide in Jordan Neely's death in Manhattan. Jury selection is set to begin later this month. If convicted, Penny faces up to 20 years in prison. An owner of the now defunct bus company is facing prison time. John Mench of Quag pleaded guilty yesterday. He admitted to conspiracy to commit bank fraud in order to obtain more than $9 million in bank loans to keep his failing business, East End Bus Lines, operational. He's facing at least five years in prison. Only in Newsday, a federal discrimination probe is underway in the Belmore Merrick Central High School District. Documents show the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights is investigating a student's complaint over a teacher's classroom discussions about Israel. The student says she was discriminated against based on the color of her skin and her nationality. The New York City Schools Chancellor will quit sooner than expected. David Banks will leave his post on October 16th. Last week, he said he planned on leaving the job at the end of December. Banks' home was raided by the FBI in September as part of the federal corruption investigation into New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Repairs are underway at the Smithtown Library after August's devastating flooding. The library has been closed since August 19th when floodwaters broke through the building's windows, causing severe damage in the basement. So far, the library has spent over $400,000 restoring the basement, but officials say repairs will likely cost $20 million. That's what we're here for. We're here to protect these things, and we want to be able to use them in the future. The library is expected to reopen soon once electricity is restored to the building. The Mets are on the brink of elimination. Fly ball, right field, it is deep, it is gone! Phil Maton's eighth inning meltdown cost the Mets the lead last night. They lost 5-3 to the Brewers in Milwaukee. The best of three NL wildcard series is now tied at one win apiece. We now know the Yankees will host the Royals for game one of the American League Division Series on Saturday night. Kansas City swept the Orioles in the wild card round. The Islanders home opener is right around the corner and there are new foods at UBS Arena. Laura Albanese has a story. The Islanders home opener is around the corner, but hockey isn't the only thing on the menu. And yes, that pun was intended. Let's go see what's new at UBS Arena. So everyone is excited about this one. It's the Knishwich. I, I cannot pronounce it, but it's a knish with um, pastrami and sauerkraut. Inside, this thing looks incredible. It's such a fun blend of New York flavors. The knish holds up to the pastrami really well, and the bite of the coleslaw, ah, feels like home. If you had one or two items that you say really stand out in your head, what are they this year? Uh, I think it's the shareable poutine pucks uh, and the knish witch. Now, I noticed some salads, some hummus, some vegetables. Yeah. What's, all, what's, what's that all about and, and what is the motivation behind having these healthy choices? So that's our fantastic partnership with Northwell. There's great choices that don't feel like they're really just eating a salad. All right, I have never seen poutine like this. It is hand-cut fries, mozzarella chilegini, and then you have vodka sauce, and little pepperoni bites. This looks incredible. What a fun twist. What do you think, Sparky? Wait, don't take my fries. This has been Laura Albanese reporting for Newsday TV. Read more sports stories like this on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box.
Cheaper online alternatives and discount stores are pulling the rug out from under Long Island mom and pop furniture stores. Virginia Huey has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This year has been tough. Ken Robeo says sales are down 30% this year at his family owned furniture store in Bayshore. The downturn in business due to several factors, including inflation and online competition. The economy's tough. I think people are a little bit overextended. Uh, you know, interest rates are so high, it's been difficult for people to purchase homes. Uh, some of our business obviously is for new homeowners, and that has certainly been down. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of furniture stores on Long Island, particularly mom and pop shops, have declined 28 percent since 2001, due in part to the growing popularity of furniture available on e-commerce sites such as Amazon and at discount stores such as Marshalls, Target and Walmart. It's been challenging. Uh especially from last couple of years, but it is actually getting worse now. John Gerg says Jennifer Furniture closed two stores since 2021 because they were underperforming, leaving the chain with four stores. Online retailers, the problem is they don't have the fixed expenses which brick and mortar stores have, and the expense level is a lot more different than brick and mortar stores. And it's been challenging because they can manipulate, they can sell at any price what they want to. And brick and mortar stores are really, really suffering for that reason. Long Island chain Harrow's, an outdoor furniture retailer, once had six locations, but it will close its last store in Carl Place in a few weeks due to online competition and high rents, according to an employee. Some antique stores on the island that sell heirloom furniture are also starting to feel the pinch. The floor traffic is here. It's just people are not opening their wallets as easily because I think there's a lot of uncertainty. Furniture retailers Newsday spoke with say they hope business will improve after Election Day. In the meantime, some are changing the way they do business to boost their bottom line. If they want something off my floor, they need it this afternoon and we can do it, we do it. So that's one of the things that we can, you know, pivot on in terms of quick delivery. And that has helped. For Newsday TV, I'm Virginia Huey. Virginia, thank you. Read more about the decline in furniture stores on Long Island on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Penn Station needs to expand its footprint to accommodate the Gateway Tunnel project. That's according to a new study. Transportation reporter Alfonso Castillo explains. They've got to figure out how to handle all these trains inside Penn Station. The goal is to go from 24 trains an hour to 48 trains an hour. Uh, that probably means adding tracks at Penn Station. And this study aimed to figure out essentially where you're going to put those tracks. The MTA Amtrak, a New Jersey transit study, looked at four different options for the project. One is expanding beneath Penn Station. Uh, this would be uh, essentially digging out more uh, uh, land underneath Penn Station to add more tracks. Uh, another option actually would be reconfiguring the existing tracks, maybe even uh, reducing the number of tracks, but changing the configuration so trains don't um, stop at Penn Station for a very long time. Read more about this story on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Here's what's up on Long Island. Head out to Oktoberfest. The German Heritage Celebration features authentic German classic dishes, German beer on tap, and music. It's Friday through Sunday at Plattdeutsch Park Restaurant in Franklin Square. The great jack-o'-lantern blaze returns to Old Beth Page. Stroll along a pumpkin trail surrounded by thousands of hand-carved jack-o'-lanterns. It's Friday through the first weekend in November. Or head out to Spooky Fest. Enjoy the haunted woods, an enchanted walk, and zombie robotic dinosaurs. It's every weekend this month in Rockville Center. For admission info and more events, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. More than 70 suspicious deaths have gone unsolved on Long Island over the last 48 years. Newsday investigates how law enforcement is trying to bring closure to victims' families. The Forgotten, an exclusive Newsday investigation. Coming soon at Newsday.com.
Checking out your hyper local Thursday forecast. Warmer today with more sun breaking through the clouds, which is good. Checking out your day planner. Mostly cloudy today. Highs in the upper 60s. Tomorrow, another cloudy day for you, but warmer with highs in the 70s. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. The weekend shaping up to be okay for apple and pumpkin picking. Long Island weather is brought to you by PTRC. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Have a great Thursday. Thank you so much for watching.